So welcome back to our Touch Designer tutorial. So we also start with our standard 3D modeling scene at this point. And we will explore, for example, by using the audio information and how we can relate it to our more complex 3D scenes. So in this example, within the geometry, I start out with a simple sphere. And in order to create a more complex scene, I make use of another service operator, SOP, over here. So the name of this one is called the grid. So if you take a look at the definition or the parameter of the grid, it actually creates some form of a grid like or matrix like structure by making use of the primitive type. For example, in my case, I use a sphere over here. So in the grid, you can specify, for example, the number of elements within each row and column. So I start with by using 10 by 10. And in the plane, I start with using the horizontal plane that is along the x and the z axis. And the next step is we try to combine them together by using the command we have come across before, is the copy. So the first one, the data source, will be the sphere. And the second one will be the template, will be the grid. And if you take a look at this one, it's, it's actually a grid, a very huge grid in this size. And what we are going to do is to reduce the size of the sphere. in all the three dimensions, x, y, and z. So after we reduce the size of the grid, we see something like this one. So this is the result of building a grid of 10 by 10 spheres in the horizontal plane. So for the output over here, In the project one, you will see the same over here. And what I'm going to do is I try to do some transformation on this particular grid of sphere by using the force. It's a kind of special force we call the magnet. And before we try the magnet, we also define the force regions, the area you would like to apply the force, again by using the metal ball. So the metal ball, I would use a smaller radius instead of a bigger one, because in this effect, we will try to exercise the force that is localized or focus on this area and then apply towards the the center of this particular grid of sphere. So I'll use, for example, half the size of this one. So this is the size of the metal ball as the, at the region applying the force. And then the next step is I connect the two of them together. First is the output from the copy, that is the grid of the ball. And the other will be the force. So in order to test the effect of the force, I can, for example, click on the magnet showing the 3D view and change, for example, some of the parameter like here. If I change the translate in the y-axis, you see that there's some sort of force pushing it up towards the, the y-axis. For a negative number, you can also have a look. So there will be a force pulling it down towards the downward negative size of the y-axis. So what we are going to do is to play around with the number over here. 
and use the audio information to control the flow of this number in order to play back with the graphical response. So I check the display and also the render thread. Go back to the project. So the next step is we also add in the audio information from the audio stream. Select the audio signal and then the audio out for monitoring. And the next step is we also we can play around with the pitch. And at this point I would like to explore another command which is called the analyze. So analyze is the command to work on with the signal by doing some form of analysis or mathematical calculation. So the selection you can have average or maximum minimum or root mean square. So by locating the root mean square is usually use it for monitoring the real volume of the sound output. So the next step is if you monitor the root mean square, that is the information over here, so it changes very quickly. So a lot of case the graphic form will be very jerky in a sense. So what we are going to do is to perform some filter in order to smooth out the operation. So go through another filter, a filter command. The filter command you can select a lot of options like the Gaussian, the box and other sharpen or edge detection. So we can make use of this two number in order to drive the transformation of the grid over here. So what I'm going to do is to split the screen again and within the right hand side I go inside the geometry and take a look of the definition for the magnet in the parameter. So I will use the result for example from the filter object to control like the translate in the y-axis of the magnet. So that means we are going to see the results in this form. So once you are done, you close the screen, go back to the project and then perform some testing. So this is more or less the operation you expect from your calculation or from your operation is the change of the volume will control the movement of the objects on the grid. You can of course try to manipulate a little bit of the filtering command or the analysis command and the Gaussian one usually will smooth out in a very smooth way. You can for example try to look for something like the edge detection which will give you more responsive result in the presentation. It will in align with the volume change of your music or the rhythm. So of course you can perform other operations on your geometry in order to visualize it into a more pleasant way. So this is the way you can make use of, for example, the audio information and some more complex combination of the object within the geometry to play around with the visualization effect.